a classic hockey stick stage in Love Welter, normally battled out between the GC contenders, but a huge breakaway went up the road and there was a GC stalemate. The first road stage of the second week, pretty sick bird of prey from Lerma to La Laguna Negra Vinuesa, 163 kilometers, no categorized climbs before the final climb, which was right on the borderline between what you'd call a puncher's finish, which I think it kind of was, and a mountaintop finish. Let's call it a hilltop finish, 6K, 6%. Attenzione, pickpocket! Attenzione, borseggiatrici! Filippo Gannett steals Mosca's bike before the start, but unfortunately for Ayuso, he crashes in that neutral zone, Matching attending to him, he would get back on his bike, wouldn't lose too much time or any time today. And there was a huge brake fight. We didn't see it, unfortunately, but it wasn't to be a GC day. Jumbo Visma clearly weren't interested in controlling for like a Roglic uphill sprint nor quick step for Remco. And here's the break. Thomas, Mollard, Caicedo, Gregoire, one of the favorites, as well as Andreas Krohn. Ganners there, a teammate of uh, Thomas to help pull the break. And yeah, Jumbo Visma just kept this on four minutes and gradually let the gap go out and out and out. And Gregoire is one of the favorites. If you don't know him, really, really talented French puncher, got a massive kick on him, won a lot of races already as well as someone like Jesus Harada always flies on the radar but he's yeah, he's won World, he won a World to Stage last year he won a Tour of Oman sprint earlier this year that was steep so an off day for Kuz Red, Rojo Kuz got to rest there was a couple of anticipations from Johansson on Intermarche from you know, a rider that's not going to beat those punchers like Krohn, Gregoire, Caicedo, Thomas on this finish, but to be honest, FDJ with ASCII just put this lock down, and so no one was going anywhere, so people just rolled through. Uh, four Ks to the start of the climb, and you see Aju Tuar also helping Chase Orsolan, who tried to anticipate for Total Energy. I think Aju Tuar were going for Nicolas Prodom. Uh, they had Touze and Godon, who are very strong riders, chasing, and they were helped, as I already said, by FDJ. You got three riders in the group. So these solo riders just really weren't getting anywhere, especially with Ganna. It's different if it's someone like Ganna that jumps, but Ineos had other ideas for him. He climbs really well for a big man. He's not supposed to be able to do this, but Ineos had him basically locked to Geraint Thomas uh, to both close down attacks initially, although it's Thomas following Krohn and Gregoire's on his wheel. Gregoire did not leave his wheel for the entire climb, which now actually starts, even though there's been a few attacks uh, but yeah, Ghana was used by Ineos to set a furious pace, and that drops a lot of the other fringe riders, like Luis Leon Sanchez, and it's obviously closing down Orsolan as well, but it clearly wasn't just to close him down, because he keeps going Ghana afterwards, they're trying to set as hard a pace as possible for Thomas, I would say, on a finish like this... Thomas, even in you know his best shape against really good punchers like Krohn and Gregoire and Jesus Harada, maybe not out and out just going to smoke them, uh, particularly when it only gets steep in the last sort of 700 meters, and as well with FTJ having more lard there. So maybe using Ganna in a different way, anticipating earlier putting Thomas in a seat would have been the play, or maybe they expected Thomas to have better legs anyway. But you can see that we haven't seen Jesus Harada. He hasn't shut down any of those early moves. He was hiding in the breakaway a little bit. He's getting this free toe in from Ghana to about 1,700 meters to go. And it's when Caicedo goes, Thomas has sort of put a target on his back. I'm the favorite with Ghana pacing. All these guys, and it's also his name as well. Like He won the Tour de France. All these guys just look at Thomas. And he's the one that has to jump here and close down Caicedo and does so. And then when he pulls off, you can see them all turn their heads in unison, pretty much, Greg Waka, Theodor, and and Krohn, to look at Grant Thomas. So it was a tough situation for him, being marked like that, especially as now FDJ actually have a numerical advantage with Ghana off the back, and Thomas has the right thing waiting for him, but then Caicedo goes again. And who's going to be the man to close him down? Andreas Krohn was pacing a little bit, but Millard, instead of just closing for Gregoire, he jumps, and then Krohn goes after him, and then everyone's all in. And again, here's a Serrata. Hasn't chased anybody. He's just followed fourth or fifth wheel in these moves until Thomas actually goes for his race-winning move with Gregoire in the wheel. Now Herada's there, and we're about 500, 600 meters to go. Very steep, over 10% gradient, but we can quickly see. When you see guys start an overlap like Herada is, when you can see Gregoire easily in the wheel of Thomas and starting to overlap himself and Chrome moving up, you, you know they've got something a little bit left, and they're moving up for the sprint. 
And the man that's been closing down Kai Theta or trying to, Thomas, he spent his last bullet and it's time for Gregoire. He starts to lead it out a little bit, Crone waiting, and then Jesus Harada, he's the man to watch. The Oman sprint he won earlier in the year was against decent competition and it was a very steep final kilometre. The helicopter downdraft or the helicopter got a bit too close. Kind of crazy. The barriers went over. Branches were falling out of the trees just behind the riders. But when Harada opens up in the drops... No one's getting near him. Hits Kai Theta with about 2.50 to go. The other barriers later on go down, nearly taking people out with them. And Harada's not just winning the sprint. He's got a gap, and he finishes with 3 seconds on Krohn and nearly 10 seconds on Gregoire. The third Grand Tour victory for Kofidis this year gets it done two years in a row, Hazus Harada, having a really great middle part of his career. And look at his Swanyurt. He is absolutely amped up, but the, the guards are not happy. The police, they, they're like, you need to calm down a little. Come, they try, come, come, come. And there's like, nah, you get moved. I think it was the organizer that said move, and then the guards said, you got to go over, and then Harada takes a nap in his lap. In the GC group, not much happened. Oterbrooks attacked. Remco told Quickstep to block it up. Hugh Carthy tried to close down Oterbrooks in sort of the top 10 battle. Wilco on his wheel. Wilco looking better than he was after that crash. And then GC Coos is a sprinter now or a puncher now. Easily in the wheel of Remco. Uh, and so, yeah, not much happened. No GC gaps. Ayuso looking okay after the crash, thankfully. But Harada wins the stage ahead of Gregoire. Then Kron Cathedro, Thomas Sanchez, Mola Prodom, Goran Ghana. Here's what Harada had to say after the stage. Stage. I knew that it was a really good breakaway for me, but it was really difficult to get in the breakaway. And then in that breakaway, it was a bit complicated. We had riders like Grant Thomas, and it was a big breakaway as well, and the rider from FDJ. But I knew, despite it going fast on the climb up front, if I conserved for the final, I knew it was a good finish for me. And then when I opened up my sprint in the 300 meters, I would just see what I could achieve what I did achieve. I don't know exactly. In terms of GC, no changes in the top 10. Kuz still maintained that 26 second lead on Soler, 109 on Evenepool. We've got another sprint stage tomorrow. It's Friday when we've got that big GC day on the Tourmalet. Make sure you stay tuned or subscribe to see those videos Friday, Saturday. Until then, ciao.